Hey guys, welcome back to the video. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, and comment down in the comment section down below. Now, DDHQ slash The Hill just released their brand new forecasting model for the 2024 election. And we've definitely seen a lot of them over the past few elections, famously being known for being, you know, maybe wrong or off, especially in 2016 and 2020. We remember that uh, it was supposed to be a landslide for the Democrats on both elections in these forecasting models, but they ended up uh, being wrong. And then, you know, Trump ended up either winning in 2016 or 2020 and ended up being a lot closer than expected. But you have to remember that uh, these are still forecasting models and they still say that you know, there is a chance for it to be wrong. But anyways, uh, enough on the past ones. There is a brand new one that has been released by DDHQ slash The Hill. This is definitely one of the newer ones. It came out, you know, just recently, like a week ago, I think, or maybe two. And today in this video, we're going to just cover it a little bit, kind of examine what it's saying. Now, it's pretty cool. It does have, you know, the forecasts for president, Senate, and the House. So that's pretty interesting. And we're going to start with the president. And we can see here it says that the current model predicts that Donald Trump has a 56% chance of winning the presidency as of right now. And this, obviously, we can see here, updates pretty frequently. It was updated uh, just yesterday again. And now Trump has had this steady lead since it's been around. He was at around 58, goes between 58 and 56. But more importantly, we have a lot of these state uh, races over here. And we can see here all the shaded ones, uh, the safe ones, I think are probably going to be more like 95-ish plus. And then obviously the likely ones are going to probably gonna be like 80 and above. And then, and then everything under that will be lean and, and toss up. And we can see here that um, right now Trump's at 235, Biden's at 226. And we have our traditional, you know, six toss up states that will definitely decide the election. On the West Coast, it's interesting to see that, you know, Oregon's 94%, you know, Colorado's 88, 85, Minnesota's only 66, very interesting, Virginia 78, and these up here 68 and 67. On Trump's end, we have Alaska being 94, we can have Texas being uh, also 85, and then we have, you know, Iowa and Ohio being 92, Florida 79, uh, North Carolina 68. And then, you know, most importantly, you got these, the big six. This is the only one that kind of confuses me. I'm a little confused why uh, this one's practically 50, 50, 51, 49. And then Arizona is so much towards Trump when uh, this one's more uh, favorable in the polls, it seems. But there, there's definitely something behind that. Uh, and either way, you know, Georgia, is, they seem to be very sure that Trump's going to win Georgia, 63%. And then the Rust Belt is very tight. Uh, but Joe Biden is fair favored narrowly in Michigan, 50, 53 to 47. And then Trump's favored 56, 44. And then 53, 47 in the other two. Also on this map, we can see the main second district, 92% Trump. And then Nebraska second, 68% chance of voting for Biden. We can scroll down here. We could check, you know, over time, the chance of winning. Like I said before, it was at 58, but it's been at 56 for around a week now it hasn't really changed too much uh here's the electoral college projection right now 280 to 258 and it's been you know pretty steady it hasn't really changed two electoral votes here and then we can see here more of these little ratings over here and for now biden only has a narrow very narrow advantage in two of the main six swing states nevada is practically 50 50. And if we scroll down here, we can you can see that uh, how it's created. So this graph is the distribution of outcomes for 14,605 simulations created of the Electoral College vote for Joe Biden, Donald Trump. The outcomes are shaded in lighter colors on the left of the dotted line indicates scenarios where a candidate loses, while the darker colors to the right of the line represents a win. So each bar shows the percentage of simulations resulting in that specific electoral college vote you can see here for joe biden and donald trump and i will post this in the description down below for everyone to check it out for themselves we can see here uh, there are a lot more scenarios where trump gets above that 300 electoral vote where biden's scenarios are more like on this end towards that lower number because it's uh, you know very hard this time around for joe biden to replicate what he had gone last time for example, even, you know, winning a state like Georgia, if he doesn't win now, and that'll get him under that threshold. So it's very important that 
Trump actually does carry this. It'll have 251 electoral votes, I believe, after he takes this state. Anyways, we go down, you know, we can see the more featured races, races, and that's pretty much it. You can obviously click around for more detail, but if you fill this out on a map, we can see that, and I'm just going to do this really quickly, we can see that uh, Joe Biden will obviously have all of these states, and like we said um, uh, previously, you know, this uh, map is very, very familiar to everyone right now because it's basically the one going on around and we can see here that this is probably going to be the map over here that we end up with you know 219 220 uh, obviously north carolina's favorite for trump but we can see here the main swing states and right now trump has have a had a pretty decent lead in uh, georgia so that puts him at 251 biden still needs to play catch up he could win with all these three states but he is not actually favored in uh Sorry, Hawaii too. And but he's not actually favored in, in all these three seats, only favored in one. So Donald Trump winning both would, would secure that. And even him winning, you know, Nevada and Trump winning the Arizona doesn't really change anything. He still would practically lose the election. So Joe Biden would, you know, not even need to focus too much on the South, but have to focus a lot more on the uh on the Rust Belt right here, and that'll get him exactly to 270. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Nebraska second, Then maybe that'll make that 269, 269 Tay. But anyways, we're going to move on next to the Senate race. The Senate races, and we can see here, a lot higher chance for Republicans. I honestly think that, you know, it's even higher than this. The model says it predicts a 77% chance of Republicans winning. I mean, I honestly think this time around, Republicans are technically being handed over the Senate. I mean, you know, they automatically have a flip in West Virginia because the incumbents retiring in a really, really safe Republican state. And also they're pretty favored in, you know, Montana and then Ohio is going to be that toss up and see where it goes. But Republicans do have a 77% chance according to this model. And we can see here, we have a lot of the safe states as expected. Minnesota should be safe too. Um, and then we have Nevada, which I agree does lean Democrat, 74% chance they give it. Obviously over here, same thing with Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, man. This is a pretty high margin. I didn't expect 79% chance. I didn't expect it to be higher than Pennsylvania, to be honest. And then, you know, we have on the Florida side, we got obviously Texas and Florida. And then we go to the more competitive states. We'll first begin with Montana and Wow, pretty high 72% chance for Team Sheehy to defeat John Tester. And that's understandable because John Tester is in a state where Trump might win by up to 20%. And in Arizona, definitely a lot closer to the margin than I expected, 55 to 45. I think right now, Kerry Lake doesn't really have too high of a chance of winning. But, you know, this is pretty understandable. And obviously, pretty close races up here in the Rust Belt. We have first Michigan top categories of the toss-up and for some reason ohio 63 to 37 i don't really know why it's uh more favored for uh democrats than arizona but there hasn't been a poll in this state for the senate since like before the primary so i don't want to pay too much attention to this because we don't really know there hasn't been any polling to update us if we scroll down we can see here uh, right once again this hasn't really changed much it was at 80, 77, hasn't really changed months. Republicans are expected to win 52 seats as of now. Democrats are expected to win 48. And over here, we have the same thing as the presidential level with the 14,605 simulations. And there's an 11.4% chance of there being a 50-50 tie in the Senate. Lower than I expected. I think I thought it would be a lot higher than that. And we can see here, the Republicans have a lot, lot more to work with here. You know, they, they have chances of getting up to 60 seats. Democrats are very limited to 50, 51, and then it gets very narrow, up, you know, past that 52. But the high, the likely, most likely margin is Democrats getting around 48, 49. Meanwhile, Republicans getting 51, 52. And last but definitely not least, we're going to have the House and this also has a Republican advantage. This model predicts that Republicans have a 62% chance of winning the House. So if these margins and these predictions end up do holding up, they are predicting a Republican trifecta in all the branches. Um, and they do think right now that Republicans are favored in all three. But anyways, let's see some of these House races. We're going to start on the West 
with Oregon, where we have Oregon's fifth, a toss-up, but the Republican is heavily favored in this race. We're going to go down now to California, where we have the 13th, where Duarte is actually very favored too. Same thing with Valadeo, and same thing with Garcia. Um, then we go to Alaska, where, wow, this is almost a 50-50 race. I give Peltola a higher chance than that, but they race rated as a, almost a complete toss-up. Uh, there isn't too much else on the West to analyze except for uh, Arizona's first, where the Republican is favored. And then we have New Mexico's second, where the Democrat is favored. Not much going on here except Nebraska's second. Don Bacon is still favored. And then most of the rest of the races that have not been assigned are going to be over here. Two in Michigan, two important ones definitely to watch out for. You know, these are two seats that are have no incumbent right now so it's going to be as you can see a dog fight this one's a 50 50 this one's a 51 49 so and then we have um north china's first where actually it is more likely that a don davis does get unseated and then it's very very um good to analyze you know a few in new york and new jersey for example in new jersey keen is is a favorite to hold this seat and then some important ones in upstate New York, where Democrats are expected to flip both of these, but it is 53 to 47, so we don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, but this is a very interesting map. Once again, hasn't really changed too much since it's come out. Republicans have a pretty good lead, and they expect Republicans to win 222 seats and Democrats to win 213 pretty similar to what we have now so not much changing over there and we have once again this simulation and we can see here that republicans are more favored obviously since we've seen they obviously have a higher floor to deal with and i think if donald trump does end up performing well on the presidential level it will end up carrying a lot of these uh, Republicans down ballot to the finish line. If Trump ends up not performing well, then it will definitely hurt them down ballot. There isn't too much ticket splitting. That's why we're going to see a lot of these chambers align with each other. Uh, especially we can see, if you go back to the Senate, in these states that really matter, like Ohio and Montana, if you know these people are going to vote for Donald Trump. I don't see too many of them voting split tickets like they used to. There was only one split ticket rate, um, race in 2020 and it was for the republicans and susan collins and maine and in 2016 there were zero so that will cover this video that will cover this new model please check it out for yourself please subscribe like and comment share this video and i'll check you guys out in the next one